Blog Talk Radio. Uh... This is Chrisom, and I'd like to welcome you to this conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. And today, we are, and I'll go ahead and say this, we are at the Center for Harmonious Living and the Living Waters Market and Cafe in Minnetonka, Minnesota. And that is at 12201 Minnetonka Boulevard. I'll be giving a talk uh, this evening, and, and actually right after this broadcast, uh, for some interested people that might be interested in the the seminar for the weekend. And so, uh, if you would like to partic- participate in this, it is at 12201 Minnetonka Boulevard, Minnetonka, Minnesota. And uh, we would welcome you here. Rosemary Goliath would welcome you here, as well as Eileen Loro. All three of us are here together. Uh, Eileen Loro is, is still in the cafe, and Rosemary, Her Holiness, is sitting right next to me. Uh, but in at this moment, I would like to to give a I, I would like to give you this: when you find that your road comes to an end, there's always an option. There's up, there's down, and there's backwards. There's right, and there's left, and there's wholeness in taking all directions at the same time as we move beyond physicality and its limitations into the divine wholeness of what our kundalini will bring. And that is not from the Radiant Sutras. That is Chrism's Sutras that I just gave to you right now, right off the top of the head. So, before we go any further, I would like to, I would like a drum roll, and I would like to introduce Her Holiness, the Queen of Questionable Comforts, Amelia Centara. Yay! Here she comes. <laughs> Here I come. Hi, hello, Chrism. Hello, Rosemary. Hello, Eileen and the cafe. It's unusual to be here, Chris, and then not have Rosemary and Eileen on the phone. Um, <laughs> yes. Because they're usually here. Their names are here, and they're on the phone, and they're listening to the show on the phone. So it's wonderful that they're there with you and have this opportunity to be with you this week. Um, I'm looking at the chat room because I know you don't have that there today. And I'd like to welcome everybody there, Fashji, the guests with the numbers, MJ, and I know other people will be logging on as the time moves on. So just to begin with, I would again, as always, like to give you the website you can go to if you would like to support Kundalini Awakening Systems and the work that Chrism does. The website address is wwwascension kundalini.blogspot.com and on the upper right hand corner you will find that donate button which is very easy to use. So please if you are in a position to donate and if you wish to donate that is where you go. I was asked recently about the donate button on the Yahoo group and that really is not the button to use. This is the one um, the one at the Ascension Kundalini blogspot. So I'm going to give you that address again, www.ascensionkundaliniblogspot.com for those of you who would like to donate and support the work that Chrism does for everybody that needs the support, these teachings during their awakening process. So Chrism, I'm looking forward to the show about the power prayer. I'm welcoming, hello Elizabeth, good to see you in the chat room. So I'll be quiet now and I'll go into the blue. So... So let me get this straight, Amelia. You want me to talk okay. about the the power player? <laughs> Is there some sort of a sports so, figure I'm supposed to be looking at here? <laughs> Sorry. Well, yes. 
<laughs> I told I told you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yes, no. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. Yes, yes, yes. This is a this 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 is a subject that I have touched on in some of the other conversations that we've had here on the Kundalini Awakening Systems Blog Talk broadcast, uh, and I have touched on it in some of the other groups. Uh, and 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 while I'm at it, and since we're all at the beginning of these announcements and whatnot, I would like to announce that uh, September 27th and 28th there is a a seminar uh, that is being given by myself and Rosemary and Eileen Laurel. And we are here in Minnesota. We are in the, the Twin Cities. We are definitely in uh, and, and near the city of Minneapolis. And uh, I'm going to hand it over to Rosemary to just go ahead and give out all the details. The seminar is here. It's in Egan, actually, a suburb of St. Paul. 9 to 5, Saturday and Sunday. We have a reception also Friday evening, 7 o'clock at the hotel. The hotel is the place for also where the seminar will be at the Best Western um, Dakota Ridge at the intersection of 13, Highway 13 and Yankee Doodle Road. The number for uh, rooms, and we may have a room or two yet, is... Six five one four five two one zero zero one zero 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 one zero zero. And and how do they contact you, Rosemary? Rosemary G at usinternet.com or six five one four five two three one six one. And at this time, I'll give you my cell phone also because we are still doing the things that we need to do yet for the seminar and being out this evening for this is the fifth of the talks that we have scheduled for chrism and so my cell phone is 651-329-9615 and i would like to say again a public global thank you to our teacher chrism for his generosity and his time and his wisdom and grace and his support for all of us that come to the, the the talks and people have been touched. I can see it on their faces and see it in their responses. And we've added a few more to the seminar because of that. We've we've added almost we've almost doubled it. Um it's it's very, very nice to see such a great response from the people of Minnesota but also people from uh, uh, outlying areas such as Kansas and and California. We have people flying out from California to attend the seminar. And uh, and I would like to thank Rosemary and Eileen Loro, uh, but specifically Rosemary, who is, who is here in Minnesota, and she has organized this, and she has, she has called all these places, made all these appointments. Out of the goodness of her heart, people, she is not getting paid for this. And, uh, yeah, you know, I, it, I just cannot, like Kundalini, some parts of Kundalini is just beyond words. And my gratitude to Rosemary is beyond words, but not beyond action. I will do everything that I can to let her know and let her feel levels of gratitude that myself and the Kundalini has for her, uh, for her diligent work here and for the process, her own Kundalini process that she has going on. Uh, clearly, uh, some of the people have come to the uh, movie showings that she has hosted, and they are so attracted to her energy uh, that that is the reason why they're coming to the seminar. And I think this is a great blessing and a really great uh, level of, of understanding and validation uh, for her, for her efforts, and for her personal practice as her personal practice is the key that has unlocked the kundalini in her. So thank you, Rosemary. Thank, thank you. you. Now, uh, you can reach uh, kundalini uh, information on the uh, the YouTube channel. It's chrism.kundalini on the YouTube network. On the Facebook network, you have kundalini awakening exclamation point. You have kundalini awakening systems two. These are two public groups. You also have Kundalini Healing, which is a public group. 
Uh, we also have um, Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at U. Hello, Chrism. Okay. Hi, everybody. It looks like Chrism has actually gone offline. So I will hold this space until he phones back in. Um, and I shall assume we're going out still live on air. Let me know there in the chat room if he will, please, everybody. I'd appreciate it. So, I mean, Quentin was talking there about the seminar. Um, hi, MJ. Can you still hear me there? Would somebody let me know, please? Um, Quentin was speaking there with Rosemary about the seminar that's happening next weekend in Minnesota. And I would just like to add, it has been absolutely wonderful to hear about what is happening in Minnesota. And Eileen has posted as well some updates and Rosemary has done amazing work. She has organized four different um, talks for Chrism to, to reach people, to be able to give his teachings and for people to come to um, to see um, what he has to say. And it's good to hear that many of these people are going to come and go to the seminar um, at the weekend. I actually, myself, spoke during two of those um talks it's not so much talks and um, she showed the film the documentary film and asked me on two particular occasions if i would talk with people about um the kundalini the kit the work that i do the integrated therapeutic touch kundalini integrated therapeutic touch and it was a great honor to do that and to meet with some people who are actually going to the seminar so I feel very part of it as well, and I'm really looking forward to hearing about it and the news. Maybe for some of you who are listening, you know, I would like to tell you as well about something else that is going on at the moment, and that is the Shakti Path. The Shakti Path is happening, um, the Shakti Path happens four times a year. It is when Chrism offers a gift to everybody who would like to participate in a Shakti path. And a Shakti path is a word from the Sanskrit um, that I think, if my memory serves, means coiled up. And it is that Kundalini, that part of Kundalini that is located at the base of our spine. Um, the idea is that, you know, with the Shakti path that Chrism offers, um, it is an opportunity for people who are seeking um, the Kundalini to come into um, a position where that gift and that grace might be received. In the context of Chrism Shakti Path, it is quite different to other Shakti Paths that I have read about. Chrism, first of all, the very first thing that he asks people or demands really is that people have to be in a practice of the safeties. Now, the safeties are the protocols or the teachings. They're really the cornerstone of all Chrism's teachings. And if a person wants to participate in the Shakti path, they need to be in a daily practice of the safeties. Now, I'm not going to go in yet to what the safeties are, but they are basically... Um, there are physical safeties, emotional safeties. There are things that one does, one practices every day that brings balance and that brings um, a conditioning really to the ego, um, which is hugely important if one is seeking a kundalini awakening or if one is actually in process with the kundalini awakening. And here is Chrism. Hi, Chrism. <laughs> Oh boy! I tell you what, oh, Blog I'm... Talk has done it again. Yeah, Once again, they have. They disconnected me, and here we are. And hopefully, they won't do it again. But I'm not going to promise anything. <laughs> okay. Well, I I just was talking let's about Shakti Path, so let's well, get straight into what you were going to talk about. Maybe this is just a really good opportunity to forgive. Forgiving blog talk has become a, a a weekly practice for us, and so once again we we forgive blog talk for for doing what they 
that they, they do. And MJ is welcoming you back from the chat room. Thank you. Um, Thank you. MJ, I wonder, I, I have no idea where I was cut off at, and I'm probably going to be cut off again. Uh, so I'll be paying very close attention to that little red bar across the top of my screen. I don't know uh, where I, where it cut me off at, but we're going to go ahead and you, we're going to talk about the power prayer, the power prayer that is of a Polynesian origin, of a Huna origin, uh, given by Max Freedom Long in the 1920s. And this is a very, very, very effective uh, way of, of giving a prayer the juice it needs in order to be manifested. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you want that new red, shiny Corvette convertible, you know, car or your, you know, you want a better job or you want to, you want a healing. It works best for giving healings for other people. So if you have a, a friend or if you know of a stranger or if you know of somebody that really needs a healing, it is a great, great way to give a healing for other people. Um, it, but you can also you can give yourself money with it if you, if it's something that you want to do that way you can you can give yourself money by using this power prayer. It is a manifestation technique that incorporates certain principles that will allow energy to be transmuted into the desired uh, expression, whether it's money or a car or a job or a healing or or anything that you can think of. And one of the first things I want you to do is I want you to, and I'm really going to just go into this, folks. I'm really going to go into this. If you want to call in, the number is 347-934-0026. Call in and, and ask any question that you like pertaining to Kundalini. Now, the power of prayer, the first thing you really need to, to focus on is what it is you want. So what do you want? And how do you isolate what it is you want? And, Rosemary, you can reach back there and get what you were getting. Um, Rosemary's in the studio with me right here. The studio happens to be her car. <laughs> She's reaching back and getting her tea. Figure it out what it is you want. So we'll just pretend uh, uh, for the moment that what we want is, oh, $1,000. So we want $1,000. Or better yet, we want to give a healing to Lasha. Lasha, my kitty cat, is feeling a little bit down, and so I want to give a healing to Lasha. So the so I isolated what it is I want to have occur. And so now I write that down on a piece of paper. I want Lasha, the cat, to be in supreme, excellent health all the way up until her time of departure is to be had. She has supreme health in all ways. All ways that cats have their own health. She has flexibility. She has interest. She has appetite. She's playful. She is the wonderful, beautiful friend that she is. Okay, so we've isolated that. And we've written that down. Okay. That is the big first step. Now, w one of the ways that you can augment this is you can get a picture of Lasha or a picture of a friend or the, the whatever it is that you want, and you can really, really begin to visualize how that is for you. You visualize it. You see the picture. In my case, I'd say I see Lasha in perfect health, and I know exactly how that looks to her. So I see that visualization. Okay, and so for any of you, if you have the car or the job or the money, whatever it is you want, the healing for another person or another animal, you see that. It is very important for you to see it and to see it consistently in your mind. It's okay to collect magazine pictures of a new car or a new job or a healing. It's okay to, to put a collage of those pictures together. It is okay to do these things. Anything that really, really, really solidifies what it is that you want to see happen 
in your mind, in your mind's eye. Now, remember, in the Huna technology, in the Huna prayer system, uh, there are three main components, actually 3.5, or you can even say four if you look at the two that are one. The first one is the unihipili, which we would know as the ego self, the little self, the, the 10-year-old that we have with us at all times. That little self that goes, oh, wow, Rosemary, I just want that Snickers bar. We can forget about all the healthy food, just bar. You know, and, and then of course, Rosemary's higher self would go, well, you know, young one, we're going to eat the healthy food, and so are you. <laughs> so you may as well enjoy that. And the Unihipili is very important in this context, as it it is the sole communicator with the high self, uh, which is the Amakua. Amakua would be the awakened Kundalini. The higher mental functioning self, which is the second self, does not get to have direct communication with Amakua or awakened Kundalini. It has to go through the small self. And so what we see here is we see an even uh, evolution of all of the selves that make up a person. Okay? And so it's like a J. If you look at a J, and you look at the beginning of the J uh, being at the middle self, the middle self goes down to the, to the ego self, gives the picture, gives the energy, which I'll talk to you about in a second, and has the ego self project it to the amakua with the energy that is produced. Now, one of the ways that you can produce that energy is by breathing. So I'm going to demonstrate that a little bit now. I'm going to breathe really loud. Don't get any other ideas about this now. <laughs> I'm just breathing the Huna prayer. <laughs> Although it is a little hot in here, but that's okay. And so what one does is one has the, the written statement in hand. And you're sitting in a, in a, in a quiet space doesn't have to be dark it can just be dimly lit kind of like maybe candlelight or you know if you have a dimmer switch on your light you just dim it down to half and allow that to just be a relaxing mode you don't need to close your eyes this is not in any way like meditating or any other kind of a prayer format that one would normally do with eyes squeezed shut hands put together rocking back and forth going oh god 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 give me that dollar bill or whatever it is you're praying for. Okay, this is not like that at all. Here you're generating energy. And part of that generative process is to breathe air in and hold it for about six or seven seconds. And then let it gently go out. And you'll feel the transmutation of oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, argon, or the components of air you'll feel that being transformed into prana. And that, as you exhale that prana, you'll feel a kind of a lift come up through your face and through your scalp. And this is what you give to the ego self of the unihipili. And this is what you tell the unihipili to, to use as a projected force in conjunction with your desire, in conjunction with your your prayer, what you want to have happen. And so as we breathe in, and you don't need to over-inflate your lungs. This is not about the amount of air that you can suck into your lungs. This is, this is just a gentle uh, inhalation, and I'll try to make a noisy one for you right here. It would be kind of like this. And you hold two, three, four, five, six. Seven, and you exhale. And right there, I felt the prana come to the top of the scalp and out the top of my head because I have the kundalini awakened already. And so there we go. That is the energy. Now, as, as it comes out the top of your head, you go to unipipili, unihipili. Project that energy to amakua or to awakened kundalini that Lasha may receive the greatest benefits of health that a 
feline cat can receive. And so you do this for about eight minutes, seven to eight minutes. And you're, you're just breathing in gently. You're not hyperinflating. You're breathing in. And you're holding for seven seconds. And you're exhaling. And giving the message to Unihipili to send the energy and its intention to Amakua. Now, you don't want to think for a single minute that Amakua doesn't know what it is you want. Of course it does. It can hear you. It knows what you're doing. It knows what you're asking. And it knows that you're incorporating the, the lower self or the ego self into the equation properly. And the one thing you really, really want to watch out for is trying to control how this takes place. How... Amakua does what it wants to do. How the Kundalini does what what the healing is expected. You don't get to control it. You have to to release your 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 ego's desire to control how it works. Okay. You explain to Unihipili, ah, uh, Unihipili, my younger self. I want you to understand that you are just to give the energy and the intention to Amakua. And you'll do this every single time I bring that prana energy to you. You project it like a movie. You can see the images of Lasha being a healthy, healthy, beautiful, wonderful kitty. And you project that into Amakua. You don't try to make it work one way or the other. You let Amakua do what it needs to do. Now, I know to some of you this is just, oh, this is just too easy. This is just too, this can't work because you're not, you know, putting all this great deal of effort into it and and you're not, you know, sweating and you're not screaming and you're not crying and you're not, you know, rocking back and forth like at the Wailing Wall in Israel. You're not doing all these things. How can it work? Well, it's not supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be incorporative. Uhane, higher middle self. Unihipili, lower self, Amakua, awakened Kundalini. In a way, it's a trinity because the Kundalini are, is the two that is one and the one that is two. And so that, in this case, this can count as a one. And so a trinity of that which you are is coming together using energy in order to accomplish a specific goal. Now, I know in Kundalini, and the Kundalini will teach you, to begin to detach from your desires, to detach from materiality, to detach from these things. And this is all good. And this is not getting in the way of that because nothing is saying that you have to do a power prayer for anything or anyone. You know what I mean, Amelia? Oh, I think Amelia went to the bathroom. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, there she is. <laughs> yes, of course, I know what you mean. It's not compulsory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to do it this way. But this is an excellent manifestation technique. And so so let's put it, say, in a more kundalini awakening context. Oh, uh, Amakua, uh, accept from my, my unihipiri my ability to face my fears without giving in to them that I may understand and receive the blessings of you, my kundalini, in a greater way without the trauma of fear coming into the equation. And I will suggest every one of my students, even those who don't even consider themselves my students, but who follow some of the information that I give, do this with regards to your kundalini. You can do this with regards to your fear. This is an okay way. This is a permissible way to begin to work on yourself with regards to your kundalini awakening. You want more energy? You want more of a boom and a bang, you know, for your kundalini, which I don't recommend, but that's up to you. You could also use it that way. The one way you cannot use it is to harm yourself or other people. Doesn't work with grudges. Doesn't work with revenge. Doesn't work with vindictiveness. 
So let that be known and let that be clear. This is not in in any way something that you can twist into a malevolent process. Not that any of you would, but for those of you, for those of us in, in our society, you know, are having a hard time in, in many different ways. You know, some people would probably try to use it that way, and it just won't work. And it's, you know, you can try till the cows come home, but it's just not going to work for you that way. The Kundalini knows, once again, it's a self-aware consciousness. It knows uh, what your intentions are and whether the intentions are viable for this prayer or not. And remember, as the Unihipili the, the uni or the, uh, the ego self, lower self, child self, gives this energy into the Amakua or the Kundalini, uh, the Kundalini still has a choice in whether to work on it or not. It's not like once, uh, you know, uh, child self, I'll just call it child self, child self gives the energy to the to the awakened kundalini, the kundalini, you know, can go, well, geez, Louise, you know, maybe, uh, uh, you know, maybe this is not appropriate for chrism at this point in time, you know. Uh, one of the most powerful ways that this prayer can be utilized is for the healing of another person or another animal or another living being, even a plant. Rosemary, bless her heart, she has this beautiful, beautiful plant in her house and and uh, she's noticed that ever since she came back from the ashram, you know, it was doing really, really well. And, and you know, as the seasons changed and, and, you know, she came back and, you know, it's starting to lose some leaves. And she's a little concerned about that. Rosemary could do this power prayer for the health of her plant. And it would work perfectly, absolutely perfectly, without a doubt. Now, those of you that need a job. This is a really, really good technique in finding a, uh, a better job. Or actually, more correctly speaking, having a better job find you. You see how that works? When you put this power prayer out there and the, the kundalini is, is working on it, which it would absolutely do, uh, the job will find you. But it doesn't mean that you sit on your rear end and you watch TV and you're, well, looking at your wristwatch going, well, gee, couldn't have made that job find me yet. Here I am. I'm sitting on the couch watching TV. You still need to go through the moves. You still need to get out there. You need to look. You need to, to network. You need to do all the things that you're doing. It's just that the right, the best job will present itself to you at the given time that the Kundalini feels is appropriate for you. Once again, divinity wants to work with you, but it wants to work with all of you. Not just your higher mental functioning self, but with your child self and with its self. And so let's just say you want a better job and, and you know what that job is. Let's see, how about, oh, I, I want to have more customers for my music studio. I like to, to, to work with music and I like to, to work with, with songs and different artists and, and I would like an expansion of, uh, business in my music business. And so you would put that uh, into a visualization mode. You would put that into a manifestation mode and you, you visualize how that looks to you. You visualize how that feels to you, how that touches your life, how that heals your life, how that heals people around you, people that depend on you. You see how that looks and you feel how that feels and you begin to to sit in that quiet room and you've written it down already and you you read the writing that you've written down. And this is, this is also a, an important component. Make sure that what you write down accurately expresses what it is you want to see done. Let me say that again. Make sure that what you write down on that piece of paper accurately portrays what it is you want to have done. Because I'm going to ask you, and even though they're not saying, I'm going to ask you to read it to yourself three times uh, as you do the breathing. So actually, I mean, you, 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 you do the reading three times first, then you breathe with that intention uh, that you've just read to yourself, uh, infiltrating the, the prana as it's developed in your lungs. Human beings have this amazing quality of turning air into prana. Uh, one of these days, it would know, be interesting to do a show on the, the many different generative energies that the human system has. But at this point, I just want to focus on the on the Huna Power Prayer. 
Um, and I don't know if, if Blog Talk cut me off last time. I'm talking really fast because I have a feeling it'll do it again. You can get this at you know from Max Freedom Long's writings. Max Freedom F R E E D O N Long L O N G. Max Freedom Long uh, wrote about this in the 1920s as it was described to him from the Kahuna's in the the islands of Hawaii, which was the country of Hawaii at that time. Uh, this is not in any way resembling the current practices of Huna, however. At least not the current practices of Huna that the that the Hawaiian holy people were released. They're kind of angry right now because they feel that they're that 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 uh, and I don't blame them that uh, their their culture is is being smothered by by other cultures that uh, that want to possess their land. Anyway, so as no chrism. Uh oh, he's still here, guys. I can see him, but the voice has gone. You're exhaling. Yes. Okay, chrism. Hello. Okay, no, you're still on. You're still on. You didn't leave that time. Okay. You know, I'm looking at this red bar and I'm yeah. going, when's it going to disappear? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can they hear yeah. me in the chat room? Nobody's typing. Yes, MJ said yes. Okay, okay. Sorry, Chris. It's okay. Is it coming through clearly? Yes, it is. Just fine. Everything is saying. Okay, thank you, Manny. Okay, so I, I'm going to get this echo from you, Amelia. Let me help you there. There we go. Okay. So uh, this will help for a, for a loved one that's in the hospital. This will help give a healing to a person that is in dire need. Uh, say you've got a relative or a friend that has cancer. This will help with that. If you have somebody that's, that has some sort of a, you know, a, a psychological uh, uh, issue, this will help with that. This will help somebody that is in an emergency situation. This will help with that. Okay. So don't feel that you need to limit yourself on what it is you'd like to visualize. The more you practice it, the better it gets. So practice it often. Practice it first on yourself. Get yourself into a position where you can live the life that you want to live. If you're hearing this information... If you're hearing about this power prayer, this Huna power prayer, then you are being given the golden ticket. This is Willy Wonka's golden ticket. Okay, you get to tour your life as you would like it to be. But you're going to have to sit down and do this prayer. And you're going to have to do this prayer in the very specific way that I'm giving you to do it right now. Now you don't have to hear it from me. You can go. You can buy Max Freedom Long's books, and you can get it from there. Okay, you can do that, and I encourage you to do that. Um, but don't try to test this out or try to, uh, you know, go to other Huna practitioners. And go, well, have you heard of Max Freedom Long's? And a lot, you know, it's like really trying to verify its authenticity or verify, you know, whether it's truly authentic Huna. You know. Don't do that. Don't ruin them for yourself. Okay? Just do the prayer and and do it honestly and then detach from it that day and then come, come the next day, do it again. Try to do it at the same time and just keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it until that person is healed or that job is received or that car is given to you or that money is it, it presents itself, or that opportunity, whatever the opportunity is. Do this prayer. I've seen it work. It's worked for me. It has worked for me. And when my when my you know when my folks you know when my father was ill, you know I was doing that for him. 
And, uh, you know, to some degree he was open, to most degree he was not. And and that is the one thing, is you're not allowed to change a person's choice with this. That's unethical. You don't get to rob a person of their choice simply because you're going to miss them if they pass. We all pass. That's part of the evolution of our soul, of our spirit, is we have to pass so that we can review our life and and look at, you know, where we need to do some improving. You know, so so look at that sincerely. Now, now, are there any questions in the chat room? Do you have any questions about this? I'll just wait for a moment uh, here. Okay. Um, no questions yet, but I'll watch to see if anybody types anything. Um, and can I say, Chris, I'm... The prayer doesn't change. Sure, it doesn't. Isn't that one of the things you don't alter it in any way once you begin it? That's right. That's exactly. No, no, thank you. Thank you, Amelia. It's, that's why I say make sure you write down what it is you want to see occur. That is very important. If, if For me, it's like uh, I want, you know, m- my intention is for Lasha to have perfect health for the rest of her allotted lifespan, shall we say. And so I would write that down. Lasha to have perfect health, allotted lifespan. Those are the words. They don't change. They don't change at all. And you keep going with it. You keep going with it. And you don't try to try to, try to help the kundalini do this for you the kundalini does not need your help it need it doesn't even it, you know it wants your participation it doesn't want your control okay yes ma'am um no there's there's no questions yes um everybody in the chat room any questions <laughs> um i think one of the wonderful things about this prism too is the way um and I haven't done it that often. I did it, I really, to be honest, I, I did it around the time um, that we were doing the healing for the ocean. And I've, and I've done it on one other occasion. But one of the things that I really liked was the way the higher self has to include or, or you know, include the child self. And, well, this is, and, this, is and the so, higher, this is the higher mental self, me- not... Not the Kundalini. Not the Kundalini, yeah. yes. The middle one, isn't that yes. right? Yes. 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 The way, the, yes. So the middle one, you know, in a way is teaching. I don't know if this is right or not, but it feels this way. Is is teaching or allowing the 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 child self to participate and to to learn through this prayer. Is that right? That is absolutely crucial to this whole process. Yes. Yes. You know, in, in, in many other religions, you know, we're taught to really just kind of, you know, tell the, the child self to just shut the heck up, stand to the side, sit down and learn. Now, sometimes it's not a bad piece of advice to give, but <laughs> a better way, at least at least the Huna way, is to include the child self in the process Allow them to participate. And how better do you learn than participating, doing, instead of just reviewing, right? Yeah. So, you know, so this is how Kundalini sets it up. And and Amakua is the Polynesian word for Kundalini. And and yes, I know that some of the people are going to be looking on the web. Amakua, how do you spell that? Da 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 da. And they're going to see. Oh, that's just like a a totem for your family, or a totem. it's not. It's not. For some people, it is on the islands. You know, I've, I've talked to some of the uh, the the Kahunas over there. At least I've you know I've read their works. I've seen them. You know, and and for some people, the the amakua is like a shark would be an amakua, you know. And they come out and they call the sharks and they feed the sharks, they pet the sharks. And, you know, the shark is their protector, kind of like their their shamanic animal. But in some of the other Huna understandings, the amakua is, is the kundalini. 
You see, most people, even even in the, the Polynesian culture, most people will not get to awaken the Kundalini. And so, well, what do they do? You know, what what do you do if you if you if you you, uh, you don't have the information or you don't have the evolution to awaken the Kundalini? Well, you change it into something that you can work with, and this is what has occurred. And it's good, you know. It's all just different levels of evolution and. And because I'm speaking, you know, in the context of Kundalini awakening, this is, you know, one of the highest levels of evolution that a human can have. These are the evolutionary points that I'm discussing with the uh, the power prayer as Max Freedom Long had it explained to him. Okay. These are the folks uh, that can immediately unleash a a, a charge of energy, energy that will heal a broken bone in about a second. Mm. Think about think about what kind of energy that requires. Okay, think about what it is to be able to see the broken arm and to be able to see kind of uh, like a an an imprint of how it should look as to po- as opposed to how it's looking right now as it's broken or bleeding. Okay, and then you apply through the Unahipili to the Amakua, you apply that prayer immediately. And I've, and actually, people have seen a flash of light. And that arm is absolutely healed in a moment. You have this ability within you. You have this skill within you. This is what we're leading up to with the Kundalini. We are not, we are not leading up to you know another tool or another diagnostic tool for, for the medical community to use in, in in a blessed way. And you know, they can use this too. You know, if they decide to open their minds a little bit wider. You know, think about how this could impact our health, our society our care and concern for other people, the service that we want to give as kundalini awakened people. Think about how that that can occur as you turn the page. (laughs) (laughs) Really? (laughs) Well, on that interlude, Fasci has a question. Thank you, Fasci. Okay, and here is it. Really, did you hear that? My God. Okay. Is it important how you frame the words of the prayer? Absolutely. Amazingly important. Because you've got to remember, words, words express intention. Intention comes across as a pattern of energy. And that pattern of energy is carried by the prana, uh, through the, the child self into the kundalini. So you must be very, very, very clear with how you want to express what it is you, you would like to have happen. Okay? It's, as the words are a pattern of energy, now we're dealing with energy, tent, prana, uh, being, being uh, transferred from one aspect of the human equation to the highest aspect of the human divine equation. So really say what you mean. If you want a red, let's just say you want a red Corvette. Now, I don't know if everybody knows what a Corvette is. Corvette is a GM car that's, you know, has a very sexy design. It's a very much desired car for some people in society. For me, if I were going to to go for a car, um, I'd probably get something like a Prius or something like that, <laughs> something that's good on the gas. And so, so we'll use a Prius for me then, okay? And then I would I would see what model of Prius that I want. I would see what color I want. I would know what uh, what year it is. Um, uh what kind of uh uh you know um program they have different levels of program you can get all the bells and whistles or you can get none right so i'd get one with all the bells and whistles and i would visualize that 
I would put pictures of it and I'd see it I'd, in the prayer room that I'm doing this Huna prayer and I would see it and I would read the words that I had written. I want that Prius. And I would, you know, I would look at it. And you do everything that you can do to allow Unihipili or your child self to know exactly what it is that you want. And then as you're exhaling from the seven second hold, as you're exhaling that energy, you're you're giving that to Unihipili. And I know this is this is the, the this is the crux of the matter for some folks is is they're kind of going, well, how does my exhalation translate into giving it to the Unihipili? Well the Unihipili shares your body. Your child self is a part of who you are. It's telling, you know, it's telling Rosemary to get those Snickers, right? So, so you can. Sorry, Rosemary's grimacing over here. <laughs> Either that, or she's really starting to want a Snickers bar right now. I don't know which. <laughs> so, so. As you give that energy, that exhalation, and as you give that intention into the child self, you ask the child self to to use it like a movie projector. Project that energy and that intention to the amakua or to the to the awakening. And you just do it over and over and over. And the gift of the energy is what you're giving to the kundalini to work this prayer. It is an energy prayer. This is why it's called the power prayer. Because not you're not just praying on your knees going, Oh God, oh God, give me this, give me that, give me this, and give me that other thing too. And yet offering nothing with which to do that with. So, you're, you know, it's kind of a gimme, gimme, gimme. This is not a gimme, gimme, gimme prayer. This is a prayer that you you give energy to Kundalini, you know, through child self. Kundalini expands it and brings to you what it is you have asked for. And and as I have said, and as Max Freedom Long said in his books, the best thing to do is to give a healing for people, especially for people you don't even know. You have to remember that that the Kundalini knows what is appropriate for that stranger or that other person to have. have. It knows the person's karma. So you don't have to worry about stepping on somebody's karma or, or absorbing karma or anything like that. Because divinity already knows. And the very fact that you're doing this is 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 a blessing. Not just to the individual but to your entire equation your higher mental functioning self the you that you're listening to right now or listening the the you that is tuning in but also to your child self the unihipili who is the movie projector of this intention into the heavenly fields okay into the heavenly fields and if you need to visualize uh a little kid operating a movie machine, you know, projecting it up into the sky. Well, you can do that. That works. Okay? However you see this is an important aspect of how it is. However you see this is the important aspect of how this is. How you write it down, how you visualize it, uh, your communication with your child self, you might want to say hello. Let's just take a moment, everyone, and say hello to our child self. Just say hello. You can even use the Hawaiian term if you wish. Hello, Unihipili. That's spelled U-N-I-H-E-E. P, as in Paul, E-E. L, as in love, E-E. Unihipili. The middle self is spelled, it is called Uhane, and that's U-H-A-N as in Nancy, E. And then, of course, the Kundalini in the Polynesian terms would be Amakua, 
That's A U M, no accident there, folks. Um, A U M A K U A. Almakua. Almakua. Think about that. And think about what we do at the beginning of each show. Um, There's definitely a connection there. Okay, are there any questions about this technique? Any questions about uh, how you would want to apply this? Any questions about any aspect of this power prayer? Please take the moment and type it up for, for Amelia or call in at this number, which is 347-934-0026. And thank you, Blog Talk, for not kicking me off yet. <laughs> I, I'm beginning to feel a bit more secure now. I think you're here to stay, Chris. I don't um, <laughs> <Tuckwood>. <laughs> um, Just about the, um, maybe just a little bit more about the words of the prayer. Um, and I know they're very important in that, but... Should they be written in the future tense or the no. present tense? Well, or does it matter? You can you 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 can make, you can make it a request. I okay. would like a million dollars. I want a million dollars. I can see that pile of cash right there in front of me. You know, I I know what a million dollars looks like, and so you, of course you'd want to go on the web and go, you know million dollars and then go into the Google images and show you maybe a million dollars what that would look like uh, and then print that picture out and then put that up on a on a on an easel or, or somewhere where you can see it a lot and then begin to teach your child self how that looks and 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 what you need it for and how you'd want to use it and it can be just for your own Benefit it. You don't have to benefit anybody else, but it is always better if you do. And it works better if you do. And yes, always you don't want to get in the way of the Kundalini manifesting this for you. And this is where people have a big problem. They want to control how this is going to come about. Well, I can't have it in dollars. I need it in quarters. Okay. Well, if you need it in quarters, then put that in to, to the to the... To the written request, write what you mean and don't change it. It'll give you a million dollars, but you're going to also have to put enough energy into it to allow that to occur. And I'm not saying that you're going to need to do, you know, the, this energetic breathing for the rest of your life. I'm not going to say that, but I'm not going to say you're not going to have to do that. For you and for your kundalini your kundalini will determine how long this takes and how much energy you need to put in it by doing the breathing. Now, this whole prayer should last about nine minutes. That's it. Nine minutes. You're done. Come back the next day, same time, same request, same wording, same intention, same pictures, same breathing, same giving of it to, to the child self who's, who's using it as a movie projector up into the kundalini. Same thing all the way across. Every single day. Don't miss. Don't miss. And you don't need to sit there and do it all day long. That's not going to help. Okay? Once a day is fine. Once a day is fine. And especially to develop your, your skills with this, you just need to... Develop a routine, develop a program that allows this to occur. And by, by what I mean by allowing this to occur is you have the discipline to do this at the same time every day in the exact same way that you did it at the very first time you started it. Okay. All right, my friends. I have to go give a talk on the Kundalini, and I'm going to get a little bit of a bite to eat first. And so I would just like to thank you for joining us uh, on this, this one-hour program, and I apologize for that. I'd like to let anybody who's listening in Minnesota know that, yes, indeed, we're having this seminar, uh, September 27th and 28th, um, 
and you can reach Rosemary if you listen to the beginning of the show. Did all that come through, do you think? Let me give it to Rosemary yes. again. Good afternoon. This is Rosemary Goliath, and we have here in Minnesota a seminar with our teacher, Chrisom, Saturday and Sunday, September 27th and 28th. We still have, can take a few more people. I am reachable at 651-452-3161, rosemaryg at usinternet.com. Send me an email, and I will send you all the information. There's, we're 10 minutes from the airport and a, a lovely place that is accommodating us and the seminar. We would love to have a couple more people from different parts of the U.S. We have some from outside. Or, or the world. You know, if you want to come from Zimbabwe or Europe or Canada or Mexico, South America, Asia, Australia, the Hawaiian Islands, Alaska, come on down. Come on over. Everybody in this world is welcome. And I just want to say thank you to Amelia Centara, my co-host and and one of my most excellent students. Uh, thank you, Amelia, for being the co-host. Thank you your, to your husband, John O'Connor. Hello, John. Um, I'm looking at uh, three threes in your hand right now. you got three threes. And I'm not going to tell anybody because I know you're playing the poker. <laughs> but... But I don't think you need to bluff. I mean, but if you can bluff, go for it, guy. And uh, uh, everybody who's in the Shakti Pot, the Shakti Pot is going exceptionally well. Uh, keep with the protocols that Eileen is putting out there. Keep practicing the five Tibetans. Keep today is love day. Tomorrow is the day you communicate that love. That's the fifth chakra day. So. You communicate that love to yourself first because what good is the love of a person who doesn't love themselves, right? Give yourself love. Give yourself validation that you may give love to other people, other creation around you. Give your love to your kundalini and let your kundalini nourish you every step of the way for the rest of your life. Anything you'd like to add to this? Miss Amelia Santara. No, Chris, um, no, not at all. Thank you very much. And I will see everybody next week and you. And really, again, well done, Rosemary and Eileen and everybody there in Minnesota. Love and blessings to you all. See you next week. See you all next week. And thank you for coming in. Bye-bye.